Good morning and welcome to uh, worship on this uh, very warm summer morning as we gather online for the worship of God today. I trust as you uh, join us, you are uh, in a comfortable location, whether at home or elsewhere. And uh, it's my hope that uh, in your uh, physical comfort, you experience uh, the gift that the comfort that God has to offer in our worship together today. Wherever you are, at home or away, as you are aware, you're welcome here. And uh, Sally, you have a welcoming and some announcements to share. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service here at UCC Burlington on Zoom. We believe that God calls us to love unconditionally. We seek to be an inclusive and respectful community for persons of every color, age, sexual orientation, gender, ability, and economic means. Join us on our faith journey. Our Zoom live stream continues to help all stay connected near and far. If you are new to this community, we want to extend a special welcome to you. Your presence is a blessing. I now have a few announcements, which I would like to bring to your attention. First, if you have prayer requests, please send them to the Zoom host in the chat and he or she will give them to Pastor Ed to lift up during prayer time. Two weeks from now on August 7th, we will worship at the Presbyterian Church, 335 Cambridge Street in Burlington. Worship time is 10.30 a.m., not 10 a.m. The worship is hybrid, and the link will be provided before August 7th. There will be no worship here at UCC Burlington on that day. If you have felt isolated and it's getting too warm in your home, either large or small, there is a cooling center at the Human Resources Building on Center Street. The center is open today until 3 p.m. and tomorrow until 7 p.m. Gather your friends and go stay cool. Please make a note of all the announcements in your bulletin this morning. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and listen to the introit as displayed on your screen. Send down the fire of your justice. Send down the rains of your love. Come send down the spirit, breathe life in your people, and we shall be people of God. Please join me in our call to worship, which is displayed, is printed in your bulletin and is displayed on the screen. Blessed is God who spoke and brought the universes into being. Blessed is God, our creator. Blessed is God who harbors a compassionate heart for earth and its life. Blessed is our God who comes in Christ for us and the sake of the world. Blessed is God who lives and breathes eternally. Blessed is our God who ever sustains, freshens, and renew us. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Once a Farmer Went a Sewing, Went Our Sewing, verses one and two, which is printed in your bulletin and will be displayed on screen. Once a farmer went out sewing, Jesus began. Soon the tender plants were growing there on his land. Every day he labored, tending, weeding, working, hope unbending, so his care was never ending for what he planned God of love when he was 
life came from you. You awaken seeds in summer. You gave strength to what was grown there. He was never all alone there. He looked to you. Join with me now in our opening prayer, which you'll find in your bulletin on paper or on screen. Wondrous God of mystery, grace, and promise, call and claim us for your purposes. As we turn to you, enlighten our minds and strengthen our hearts for serving your will for the well being of creation and its life. In Christ, Seeking Jesus' way, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There's a spirit in the air Calling people everywhere Praise the love that Christ revealed Living, working in our world So I'm looking around and I can't tell whether we have any younger children around, but let me just tell you about uh, something I heard this week, which prompted some thinking about this time we share. I was driving in the car and changing radio stations when I heard as the uh, auto scan stopped two hosts making fun of a third radio host apparently because the latter didn't understand a caller's expression they had just heard about weather. It seems they had been talking with people about the heat and one caller had quipped, it was so hot yesterday, I looked out the window and saw three trees chasing a neighbor's dog down the street. Now, being a cat owner rather than a dog owner, I had to stop and think for a second before I understood that was a joke that had to do with the dog's relationship with trees, bushes, and fire hydrants when walked by owners. But this radio host just didn't get it. And so her two other colleagues were making fun of her lack of understanding. And I thought, hmm, as a kid, I remember being on the outside of understanding, sometimes not getting a joke or not being able to answer a riddle. So I thought I might have an exchange with the kids of God today to see if they could stump me or I them and talk about what it can feel like to be on the outside of understanding and contrast it with Jesus' simple storytelling about what he called God's kingdom. But we're Zooming and it's not easily possible. So I'm going to let this story of a radio personality's lack of understanding be a prelude to our coming sermon time. Although we can try a form of jeopardy in which I can give you a riddle and you can answer to Michael if you want using your chat function. So as we close our children of God time and move on to our sharing, here it is. What can run but never walks? Has a mouth but never talks? Has a head but never weeps? has a bed, but never sleeps. And so communicate that to Michael through chat if you know the answer to that riddle. And so with this, let's take a moment now to review the people who are on our prayer list and the issues of concern that are expressed there, both joys and sorrows. 
And if you have anything to add, I invite you to send that to Michael at this time. Um, as we think about it, I just wanna share a, a joy uh, thanking members of the DAC in it, most especially uh, Deb for all the work done behind the scenes to make our worship and comfort possible today. And, uh, and also, uh, as I share that joy, to ask you to keep um, a uh, family of Caleb uh, in your prayers today. I learned this week that Caleb, whom I baptized 23 years ago or so, was killed in an automobile accident in Los Angeles this week. Michael, other joys or concerns? Nothing in chat. Nothing in chat, but Laura got it first. And the answer to the riddle was a river. So there's a joy. We have an answer to the riddle, but ask yourselves if you didn't get the riddle, how you feel about being on the outside of Laura's wisdom. So we take a moment and pause and let's be aware that we all bring our joys and our concerns and let's bring the fullness of our hearts contents to our time of prayer later in our worship. And rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Please join in our litany of faith, printed in your bulletin and now displayed on screen. Amidst all kinds of sin, O oh God, may your divine ordering come into places of violence and destruction. May your divine ordering come into the lives of those impoverished. May your divine ordering come into the lives of those hungry and thirsty. May your divine ordering come to those ill or addicted in body, mind, or heart. May your divine ordering come into the lives of those abused and oppressed. May your divine ordering come into the lives of those fearful or anxious. May your divine ordering come into the lives of those lonely or despairing. May your divine ordering come. O oh God, to whom Jesus prayed, thy kingdom come. May your divine order come into the life of this world. Please join in singing our devotional hymn, You Are Salt for the Earth, O People. Verses one and two, printed in your bulletin and now displayed on screen. You are salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the reign of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the city of God. Bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace, bring forth the reign of justice, bring forth the city of God. You are a light on the hill, O oh people, light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O oh people, shine for the city of God. Bring forth the reign of mercy, bring forth the reign of peace, bring forth. 
we continue our worship now with the reading of our scriptures and our four scriptures today all come to us in consecutive verses from the first 23 verses of chapter four of the gospel of Mark. In the gospel of Mark, we are closest to the time of Jesus and the collection of stories as the gospel of Mark is written almost a generation before our other three gospels. And Mark writes in a kind of rapid fire succession. So as we read these stories today, uh, you can imagine how Mark's hearers might have heard his gospel. And we begin with the parable of the sower told by Jesus, which like most parables of Jesus have a very simple, straightforward point to be discerned. And so listen, as we hear that again, Jesus began to teach by the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, Jesus said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on a path, and the birds ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil and it began springing up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. If you have ears to hear, then hear. Our next verses have Jesus speaking to the purpose of why he told such a parable. But if you note carefully, it's interesting that while most people have ears, and so can hear, Jesus in these words seems to suggest there's an ulterior motive for his telling of parables, which leaves some scholars suspicious as to if these are really the words of Jesus or perhaps words from another tradition that Mark has come across in his collecting of stories and sayings of Jesus. When he was alone, those who were around him along with the 12 asked him about the parables and Jesus said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive and may indeed hear but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. Hmm. Mark continues now building on the parable that has been told by having Jesus offer an interpretation of the parable, which you may notice may not be the interpretation you came up with when you listened to the original parable. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. And then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word 
but the cares of the age and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. And finally, in the last verses, we hear of Jesus speaking of another item in a parabolic kind of way, a lamp and this light. Jesus said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed or, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If you have ears to hear, then hear. Amen. Well, so if you caught any uh, paradoxes or perhaps contradictions even in the scripture passages today, uh, I understand because I hear them. And so, you know, as is often the case, sometimes coming to have understanding of Scripture can be difficult, as it can be in, in any field. Uh, when I was in college, I wanted to take a course of introduction in engineering. I didn't get the subject matter at all, and I ended up dropping the course after during two weeks of unfathomable lectures and textbook reading. Unfortunately, I only had one engineering friend who kind of wondered what was wrong with me. When it comes to understanding a subject or matter, achieving a goal, we all have our own capacities and limits, which is why I think Jesus taught followers to pray to God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that he gave them images of God's kingdom and taught them a way leading to its realization by telling stories simple stories, like the parable of the sower we heard, in which the farmer went out sowing seed, met with great frustration, and it was not until he finally planted seeds in the right spot, when he was probably thinking about giving up, that they grew, and not only did they grow a bit, they grew incredibly. I think Jesus knew sowing seeds of the kingdom of God could be difficult, and would lead to his followers' frustration. So wanting to encourage them and us to persevere and hold hope, he told his story to remind them that faith and trust in God's partnering power were essential for being his followers. It was important, too, that he do so because most imagined in his day the kingdom of God's coming through an outside divinely driven force, a messianic political leader utilizing coercive, even destructive force against those who stood in the way, who were judged opponents of God's kingdom. But Jesus, after the Deuteronomist and the Hebrew prophets taught otherwise, taught that God's long-awaited kingdom was not far away or not beyond the scope of human possibility. He imagined it as virtually here, within and around us, in the midst of our building loving relationships and loving communities. So it was Jesus could live toward what he prayed by practicing a nonviolent, inclusive fellowship building, advocacy for those poor in spirit and in finances, and offer a healing ministry for all, regardless of their religious orthodoxy or purity. Jesus taught about all of this enterprise using a particular teaching method, one that employed the asking of questions and encouraging listeners to exercise an imaginative thoughtfulness by telling of parables, comparison stories, using familiar examples to illustrate the qualities of the coming kingdom of God. Indeed, Jesus typically used a particular style of parable when he had three choices in his day, the first of which were riddle parables, 
not easily accessible to all. The purpose of this type of parable was revealed to us today in Mark's account of what Jesus purportedly said to followers after he told the parable of the sower. Remember, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that they, listen to this carefully, that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. Consider the implication of these words. Jesus saying he told parables so that only a sophisticated few would understand and that others would be condemned by their lack of understanding. That would be a recipe, it seems to me, for creating a private club of insiders, those in the know, superior, chosen above others for salvation. Does this sound like Jesus to you? Or might it be a perspective that emerged among some of his followers, their way of reacting to there being a diverse set of interpretations emerging about who Jesus was and what it meant to follow him? A second type of parable were example parables containing a moralistic framework leading to a judgmental categorizing of followers. And this is illustrated by Mark's verses, which are his purported explanation of the parable of the sower. You know, where he talks about, these are the ones in the path. And this is the what they lack. And these are the ones that are going to hear the word, but other kinds of desires and interests enter in and draw them away. And these are the ones, again, in the end, the final group who hear the word and accept it. And they're the ones who will bear the fruit. And note again how different this is from the original parable and how the focus has changed from encouraging hope and faith in God to assessing the moral quality and status of different groups of hearers. Does this sound to you like Jesus or more like perhaps an emergent spin of later followers who were developing a religion about a risen Christ around what they believed rather than sticking to the religion of Jesus, which is about loving and welcoming all. And finally, there's the third type of parables, which were open-ended, challenge parables, which I think Jesus most often used, and reflected in the original parable of the sower with its simple point, surprising point at the end, that after the sowing and failure of sowing of seed, finally, at last, there are results. And I think this is reinforced in the final couple verses of our hearing today with Jesus' question about a lamp and its light. Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on a lampstand? Or there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Note how Jesus seems to have implied that like the light of a lamp, the good news of God's coming kingdom is not meant to be hidden, but to be seen and disclosed so that all may come to understand they have a saving, life-saving stake in learning how to live into this kind of order on earth. My conclusion is, is that Jesus was not only a, a compassionate healer, he was a wise teacher who employed a brilliant method of challenging his followers while allowing them to exercise their own interpretive imaginations so as to come to their own conclusion that they might internalize his way and be transformed without having had a sense of having been coerced. Will this way, if it was the way of Jesus' work? I don't know, but I hope so. For Jesus' loving way, inclusive truth, and a life of shalom are preferable to any fear-laden way, exclusive, exclusionary truth, 
or any orderly life, sometimes promulgated by too many Christian followers of Jesus today. May we persevere in our sowing here of a more Christ-like seeds until we do so in the right and relevant places of this 21st century world where just perhaps we'll experience the growth we long for. Amen. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us bread, such a truth as ends our strife, such a life as conquers Let us pray. O holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of awakening to the light of this new day. And it being so hot, we thank you for the technologies of the world that permit us to experience cooling atmospheres, including the atmosphere of our being able to be together in worship of you and in fellowship with one another. And we pray, O oh gracious God, by our coming to our worship today, that we will receive the gift of understanding what you would have us walk with in our lives as we go today. We thank you for Jesus, our teacher, and for his way of teaching, which enables us to want to open ourselves fully in mind and in heart to the following of his challenging way. For we trust, O oh gracious God, that you call forth from us a stewardship of inclusive love that may grow and envelop this world. And especially we pray so in this world of so much, so much darkness of confusion and despair, anger, distrust, hatred, and expressions of all kinds of violence. We pray with all today who are suffering from those who have no cool place to go no safe place in which to harbor themselves and their families. And we pray, O oh gracious God, that those who have power and those who have resources will bring them to bear on all these situations that are so, so sad. And we pray for individuals across this globe that are suffering today suffering unto even the loss, the unexpected loss and death of loved ones. Keep them alive with the hope that is ours in not only the teachings of Jesus, but in the wondrous mystery of what you have turned the giving of his life into, a glimpse of the promise of the enduring nature of your love unto eternal life. And bless us as your church, that we might continue to adapt to the new needs of our day, to bring the gospel to new places, that others may join with us in partnership 
that we might grow in the expression of your light of love in Burlington. One in Christ, we pray. Amen. Come, come, come Holy Spirit, come. Everywhere in the world, we are told we are not enough. We aren't rich enough, thin enough, sexy enough, young enough, old enough fast enough, healthy enough, or smart enough. But here in the church, you are enough, just as you are. Here in this community, you are wanted, and we won't ask you to change a thing. Churches like ours are a breath of fresh air in a world that has us constantly holding our breath. And we want to be around for generations to come. You can help make that possible by supporting our congregation. You can give online or by mail, by mailing your gifts to our church office. If you aren't able to give, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, if, if you're able to give, thank you so much. If you are experiencing financial hardship, the church is also here for you. Please speak with the deacon's chair, Deb Glancy, in confidence for assistance. I now invite you to reflect on this sacred truth that you are enough just as you are. God of our lives, whose call comes clear, through Jesus Christ, your presence near, by Spirit led your will we heed, your grace to show in word and deed. Oh, Let us pray. O oh, holy and gracious God, receive now our promises of offering ourselves in life, energy, and resources of all kinds to you. See it as a sign of our wanting to have a place in the bringing forth of what Jesus called the kingdom in our midst. And bless us, therefore, in the use of these gifts that we might do so wisely and compassionately after the manner of Christ's spirit. Amen. Please join in our commissioning, which is printed in your bulletin and displayed on your screen. Let us go and be Jesus' followers. Let us keep his parable teachings in mind. Let us go and serve the values of God's envisioned creation. Let us practice Jesus' style of teaching and living in our words and deeds. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Christ taught us of a farmer, verses one and two, which is printed in your bulletin and will be displayed on your screen. Christ taught us of a farmer who went out sowing seeds. A few had trouble growing among the rocks and weeds, but others grew till harvest in soil that was so good. Oh God, you saw 
Christ this church was built here by saints who followed you. The seed took root and flourished, we hear and follow too. And now as we depart, may the blessings of God, our creator and dreamer, and of Jesus, our Christ and teacher, and of the Holy Spirit, eternal energy, flowing, refreshing, guiding and turning us to the fresh breeze of God's intended order. Be with us and give us strength and patience until our hope is realized. And may this spirit be with you now and always. Amen. And now, uh, first of all, a thanks to the voices of Laura and Sally and Deb, whose voice was uh, not only heard briefly, but uh, was seen in a lot of the technolo technology uh, behind this, as well as to the tech man himself, Michael. Uh, let us give our thanks. And uh, our last act is going to come from Michael himself, who's going to unmute us all so we can speak to one another and hear. It's gonna be like the first Pentecost. So hang on. All right, I'm gonna unmute folks. And if you wanna unmute yourselves, go for it. <laughs> okay. Hey. Well, welcome, Has there everyone. ever been a Congregationalist who didn't wanna unmute themselves? <laughs> well, I found out that yes. well, it's nice to see so many people here. <laughs> Yeah. I just 